It's time for Q&A in the Kitchen, the podcast and YouTube series where tattoo artists and piercers talk about things that concern people who collect tattoos and piercings. Brought to you in part by Skin Kitchen Tattoo, the Axiom Body Piercing Studio in Death Before Decaf. So we got uh, the, the, the table's got a little crowder. Crowded, did it or crowded it or yeah, yeah more tight is. today. We keep multiplying. Well, yeah, we got uh, Michelle <laughs> from uh, Velvet Lotus and Iowa City here with us today. That's why it seems extra oh, crowded. Okay. Okay. Well, that into the podcast. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not the still, extra donuts or still, anything. Still, yeah, like it's that. only my second. Uh, I thought I was putting on some weight. No, third? no, it's oh, just my third? No. Yeah. another human being here. So yeah, uh, well, introduce yourself better than I did, Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle from Velvet Lotus Tattoo in Iowa City. Don't forget to speak into your mic. <laughs> and you don't have to, not like, don't. Okay. We don't need I'll kind of play my. Coming in. But, yeah, we'll, oh, get, brother. we'll get to that. <laughs> anyway. That's coming up later. So, Stay yeah, tuned. anyway, I tattooed yeah. at Skin Kitchen Tattoo with uh, you there, Jack, for many years. I, I think it was that. like 13 or 14. Most of my career, actually. Yeah. So, nice. yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm Absolutely. glad you stopped by. Well, I think um, it would, might be interesting just to kind of talk about how you got started and then maybe how along the way maybe we met and just kind of how you ended up at this table today in a way. That might be kind of fun for people to find out. And, cool. And uh, give you a chance to plug yourself a little bit and let people know that you're the real deal. All right. All, all right. right. Sweet. Well, nope. um, no perpetrating frauds. Uh -uh. <laughs> I first got introduced to tattooing. Uh, my brother got a tattoo, mm -hmm. and he was 16 at the time. And my mom made him write a um, paper uh -huh. so that she would sign for him. She said she'd sign if he mm -hmm. if he wrote this paper. So that was the first time I kind of like saw a tattoo or anybody in my family was tattooed or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was cool and uh, went off my way to college and wanted to kind of be involved in some sort of artsy sort of business. And then that's exactly what happened. I just kind of manifested that, I suppose. Mm. Uh, after I graduated college, I uh, introduced myself to a gentleman at the bar mm. and uh, he happened to be a tattoo artist. Took a minute for him to like admit that, like it was back in the, the early 90s mm -hmm. and uh, he was, you know, like covered, had it had even a shirt that was so long it like covered his knuckles, his hands were tattooed and stuff, mm -hmm. was real shy about letting me know he was a tattoo artist hmm. and I was like, I think that's rad, you're a rebel, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I went far away to college from Chicago to Missouri and all that stuff, kind of on my own little rebel journey. Mm -hmm. And um, so he wanted to open his own tattoo studio. I'm fresh out of college with a business degree. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. While I'm running the studio with him, totally not tattooing at this time, um, the artist that was working with him, his apprentice, Jason Cross, um, he said, oh, your color, the way you color things is really unique. Because I was drawing and getting back into my art. I had been drawing for years. Mm -hmm. but um, And we all like to be told we're kind of good at something or somebody sure. would like something. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of jumped on that bandwagon of maybe I should learn to do this. Mm -hmm. And one thing led to another, and Joker, as he went by back then, he's now Jay Brown, owns uh, Northwest Tattoo Museum in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. it is. Um, but uh, Jay started teaching me a lot about um, things that are obsolete really now, sterilization, yeah. building your somewhere. own needles, yeah. turning piercing jewelry, you know, running mm -hmm. the autoclave, all that sort of stuff. And... Uh, he did start to teach me to take apart and put back together a coil machine. And um, I took all that knowledge after our relationship, just kind of parted ways, and moved to Chicago um, back home. Took me a while, and thankfully to Omar and Marco, uh, they own Skin Abrasion Tattoo in Oak Park. Sorry, I'm plugging these guys, no, but they're really do. important do. to me, you please know? Please do. No, no, okay. no. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, Marco and Omar <laughs> encouraged me to visit the crowbar. Do you remember the crowbar? Oh. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, 
that was uh, that. You know, that's. If it wasn't for places like that, you know, I mean, places like that make you know that you're in Chicago. I guess it's like, like when I went when I was in places like that, I'd never been in any places like that really since or before. You know, those places just you felt like you were in this crazy city that was not really a part of the planet. So yeah, I can't forget the crowbar and then there was a, what was the other one? There was one with the tank. The tank bar, upstairs you went and the the front of the bar was like tank treads and all that and we were messing with the hookers down on the street with the laser. <laughs> Is that a crazy horse the strip club? No, it wasn't a strip club. It was like this what little rock this? bar. It had chain link fence oh, everywhere. The yes, that's here. Uh, the exit, exactly. The exit, yeah, yeah, exit. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I hope. Wow. Yeah. On North Avenue. Yeah. 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 The crowbar, that was the place that had the trapeze things hanging from the ceiling. And exactly, it was a dance club. It was booming. They had a yeah. bondage night. They had cages with go-go dancers. Right, yeah. And it was fun. just this big dance And a dance fake floor. tattoo. They had a temporary tattoo artist there. They did have a temporary yeah. tattoo artist there, and Marco and Omar would go there oh, you, yeah. to, uh, they were working at Prairie City Tattoo for Joey Drada at the time, who actually played in my mom and dad's wedding. So I had oh, gone cool. there to inquire about finishing up an apprenticeship. Uh -huh. And Marco and Omar said, why don't you go to Crowbar? We're there Wednesday nights. We don't really tattoo, but we kind of say we do, but we just try and get them to set up appointments and stuff. So. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I went and they said that they'd introduce me to George Pappas. Ah. And so they introduced me to George, who, as you well know, worked for Fat Joe at Jade Dragon uh -huh. in Chicago, up on Belmont on the west side. And uh, it was just one of those situations. I overheard the podcast the other night, Wesley, about your guys' origin story. Yeah. And it was very similar. Like, well, keep hanging out. You know, mm -hmm. after I talked mm -hmm. to Fat Joe, George got me in introduced to Fat Joe and Fat Joe said keep hanging out and see if you get along with everybody and uh, I guess I got along well enough with everybody mm -hmm. that you know they didn't kick me out and, awesome. and, in, and in tattoo speak that means see if you can see if you can stand it here yeah, really? yeah I got uh, rest because every single and... one of these men here are going to test you yep. yeah all the time and each Constantly. other oh yeah, yeah. well because that's just yeah. part of yeah. it you know and that that's what yeah well you know hang around and see if see if you click with the guys or whatever yeah, that yeah. means hang we're around all very and see if you're not yeah. independently right, right. Thought. we're gonna weed you out that way first yeah absolutely especially back i mean and when you say back then it sounds kind of silly but the industry has changed so much that you know early 90s although it was that long ago mm -hmm. in tattooing and the way it's evolved and how it's gone crazy it seems yeah, like it was twice like 50 as long years ago yeah. Yeah. right yeah, really but does. anyway yeah. nowadays well, someone comes in for an apprenticeship and i hear things like you know they sit them down and be like draw a rose draw a panther you know right. like yeah. like before That's, you know yeah. now it's about your drawing skill first and yeah. then yeah. Before, back yeah, in the day it was fitted. almost to see if you were tough enough to be in the club yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah. 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 well exactly. it was there, there were these sacred things that was yeah. you had to know somebody to get the coils you yeah. had to know someone that, that could build a frame or you had to learn to how yeah. to build a frame or you right. had to learn how a machine even works so you could cobble the parts yeah. together just order to, it online so you you coveted that 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 info because it wasn't it there wasn't was no internet knowledge. there was no, no book you could go to read to find that these were mm -hmm. secret things passed along and cobbled together by certain mm -hmm. people that if you were lucky enough to know that certain person and he liked you enough to kind of show you yeah man this is how it works and you had that knowledge and only that guy had that knowledge you weren't just going to go pass it out nope. either i was so an eavesdropper very protected yeah. little of corner were. of the artistic and world for a long time I got part to... of that was because back then like a good example would be des moines Mm -hmm. And when I first started getting tattooed, there was one. Then by the time I started piercing in 94, there were three. Yeah. Now we're close to 30 in the metro area. Yeah. There, right. it, back then, it, it, they were a lot more... Yeah. If you wanted to be a tattoo artist, you were either moving into a really large metropolitan area. And even then, if you were in like in Chicago, there was maybe, what, 50 people that tattooed there, maybe? Mm -hmm. you know? Maybe, and back yeah. then, yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. Now there's probably close to 500 I'm guessing at least so it's like they were very protective about it because yeah. it was a very limited thing it wasn't somebody you know you fill out a job application you get to do it mm -hmm. and piercing's mm -hmm. kind of is always yeah. been the same way yeah there's only a limited amount of people that can do this well and it makes thing. sense too i mean why are you going to teach people how to take money out of your pocket yeah like yeah. if you're the only person that knows how to cure an earache 
I mean, I, it might not be good to, you know, <laughs> use it in the medical field, but, you know, if you're the only person that can fix that car and there's a line of cars, mm -hmm. why am I going to teach other people how to fix that car? Fuck, right. No, they're all coming to me, man. Yeah. I'm fixing these cars. Why would I want yeah. anybody else to know? Nope. Well, pretty soon it gets to a point where there's the internet, there's more people getting interested in it, there's basketball players that are more readily seen because of internet and because mm. of the mass media and everything else. Tattoos get into the eye, and pretty much the, it's it, it turned into okay, who's going to profit out of, off of it first by giving out all these secrets? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So you it know really that's did. when it, like schools kind of started popping up here yep. and there. These rip off schools pay three thousand bucks, and then yeah. three I'm days, a tattoo artist. you're yeah. going to be a you rich saw tattoo shops. Tell you how to open your own business. You saw tattoo yeah. shops yeah. pumping out five apprentices just to get right. one right. artist and that was working for them. Part of that had to do with the sudden demand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think people were really prepared. Right. For what happened. Um, right. No, because they weren't. It, it went from you know, yeah, we're doing we're doing okay with like two artists, and then suddenly they, they're turning away people on a regular and that's, basis. And that's yeah, it, that that really hurt the business in that you know before there was three shops to go to, and hopefully one of them was pretty good, or at least had a guy there that was pretty good yep. most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, well, now there's 800 freaking artists in that town, and there's probably 25 good ones. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to go through so many more people and so many more and people. Mm -hmm. And and agreeably so go. Uh, this guy seems good enough, Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and then they they never get really satisfied, and they have kind of this dinged sense of what tattoos can be in there. They have this dis disappointment instead of being able to easily find a great artist who knows what they're doing and get yeah. a good tattoo. So mm -hmm. it's kind of flooded the market with a bunch of people that you know want to get whatever they want out of it, and they think it's this boomy thing, and they're going to jump on its yeah. back, but. Um, Back in the day, it, you you couldn't. No. I mean, I, I, it was so hard for me. I moved out of state to be able to get my just my foot in the door. You know, I mean, just to get someone to talk to you or take you seriously, mm -hmm. you it, it's like you had to know somebody. Yeah. Or you and had I to was, be getting tattooed by somebody for years, for years and, years and kind of earn their kind of respect. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Well, and I, I always say this, like people, whenever people would ask me, like, how do I get involved in the music industry? How did this happen in your life? How did you... Yeah, I hung out long enough till they put a broom in my hands. Right, mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. You know, it. you hang out long enough, you get to know these people, and you get to a point where they're like, you know, you're here every day. So you're gonna stand why here. Why don't you something. do something? Because mm -hmm. I'm sick yep. of trying to carry on a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of true. Yeah. So, yeah, in a way, you kind of have to bug them to death. But there's some people that make it painfully obvious that that's what they're doing, and oh, yeah. that doesn't impress me. Mm -hmm. You know, no. <laughs> it's the ones that do it easily and 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 like they're not even trying, mm -hmm. and they're not in your way, but they're always there. Mm -hmm. You know, that that impresses me, you know, um, the last apprentice I'll ever have, um, I, I I did it just like that. I didn't give him a schedule. I didn't tell him when to be there. I didn't tell him how much to be yeah, there. I want to see how much I, he wanted. You know, I, I wanted to see how much they wanted to be there, and mm -hmm. they were there all the time. Yeah. You know, and that's what I wanted to see. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, you're showing me that you give a crap. Yep. That you're not just going, well, uh, McDonald's doesn't sound that cool. And <laughs> tattoos are neat. I like those shows. So I'll do that. As mm -hmm. much as yeah. things have changed, I think that's a matter of respect. Like yeah. They were showing a, a respect yeah. for things, yeah. you know. And I think that's always been kind of, you know, um, prevalent in the tattoo industry is this some sort important, of level of pretty important factor. respect. It's very important. Mm -hmm to be able to gain that knowledge yeah, you know? as much as and know what you're gaining and know you know that it's not just a it's it, it's like, something to us you know there's it's a responsibility you have too as right, much you as know? we've grown we've still our industry is only recently it's still got a lot of very old kind of traditional school old school story you know style ties to it so oh, yeah i think things like that are kind yeah, of yeah like shit matters yeah right. it shouldn't mm -hmm. go away yeah yep. it shouldn't that's, no. you know, that's what makes our industry what it is. Yeah. And if you lose that, it's kind of like everything else. It's like, you know, Walmart started out as a small little drugstore in some small town. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to provide his, you know, local people with, not, you know, with good goods mm -hmm. for a decent price. And then he turns into this giant and they've really lost sight of what they started. Yeah. Same thing with the industry of tattooing. If you get in a way, commercial, yeah. you can lose it. And there you know? are, yeah, well, and it's all about what you want out of the industry. Some people go into the industry because all they want is the money out of it. And they look, ooh, it's hot. Yeah. We need to make something that all mm -hmm. these artists can buy so we can just suck the money out of there. And then we need to make something that all these people want that are getting them. And because this is huge, man, it's huge. Right. It's blowing up. You got to get on it. Yeah. And then the other side of it is like, man, uh, wow, this was some timing. Uh, yeah. This industry is going nuts. Uh, I love doing what I'm doing. This is crazy. And if I can do this more often than not, so uh, and, and still pay my bills, 
I'm in heaven. This is great. great. I don't really care that everyone loves it. Yeah, it's kind of great. Maybe because it's given me more opportunities to do what I like Mm -hmm. to do. Because unfortunately, I picked one of the only art forms in the world that that you have to have another friggin' person in the room with you while you do it. Yep. So, uh, so on that side, it's good, you know, Yeah. but, um, on the other side, I don't really care, no. you know, yeah, there's yeah. innovation. Yeah. You get pushed by all these incredible artists that you see. If you subject right. yourself to Instagram on a daily basis, oh, yeah. like I do and make yourself feel this big in yep. the art, art world, I'm there. <laughs> but in ways that that's, that's so good, you know, yeah. to, to keep yourself there. If you yeah. ever feel like you're not there, then you're wrong. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. You know, you're not going to grow from there. So yeah. see, but I, anyway, I think the piercing suffers from that because there was never a tradition. It appears right. got big, there was a huge boom, and a lot of tattoo shops took piercing as kind of a, yeah, it's a sideline. Side maybe. gig, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, if you wanna if you want to apprentice a tattoo, you're gonna have to learn how to pierce. Oh, We're yeah. gonna charge 20 bucks for every piercing. We're gonna pay you five bucks. Mm-hmm. Do you think that was different in Europe? Like, we're for cure? And well, I, I, I think that when it first started out, it wasn't that way. If the gauntlet way, which was originally the big boom, mm-hmm. um, maybe if they would've survived longer and had more of an influence, but like that just explosion that happened with the navel piercings, there's not, like most of the ki- kids, I think, that are piercing today, if you ask them, you do, hey, so have you ever heard of Jim Ward? They go, I don't know who that is. Oh, yeah. Totally. Uh, you know, you ever heard of Gauntlet? I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Because all that tradition was just lost. Yeah. It, yeah they got swallowed in that wave. Really. They did. And right? people didn't hold people to that. Mm-hmm. They, did, yeah. they took on apprentices or they, it was a sideline thing. Yeah. It, was kind of it didn't have that heritage kind of thing built into <laughs> yeah. it yet. It was a victim of its own success right from the get go. It didn't yeah. have this low brew that right. tattooing did. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, tattooing's kind of been there and it's popped up here and there. And you knew a guy that had a grandpa or, yep. you know, there was people always in history that had a, So it's always kind of been there. And you knew that, you know, the tattooers or tattoo shops were kind of this certain way. It had at least a stigma to it. Mm-hmm. Piercing. Yeah. It, it didn't have anything. No. It was like this. Whoa, what's this? This is a freaking awesome. Uh, hey, wait. Whoa, whoa. Oh, well, okay. Now we're in hot topic. We're screwed. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like it started in Gauntlet in seventy yeah. in the late mid to late seventies. Like yeah. seventy eight or seventy nine was like the first professional piercing studio. Mm-hmm. By eighty or ninety one, which is a little under what fifteen years, maybe right around in there. Yeah. It's all over the place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there just wasn't that that long period to kind of work in that tradition yeah, and to work out the kinks and how things kinda, go right. and so right. forth. And Gauntlet did attempt to do that when they trained their piercers, but most of those people don't pierce anymore. Yeah. There's only a handful of those guys even around in yeah. gals. So right. it's it's kinda weird. Yeah. I mean I try to uphold it, but yeah. I just end up refusing to apprentice people. Yeah, I know what you mean. So shifting back to Chicago, yeah, you got you there. Yeah, by meeting, so, uh, so George, right? yeah, I uh, met George Pappas, who introduced me to Fat Joe, got asked to hang around, uh, did that. There was like 10, 12 artists at the studio. And um, then all of a sudden comes in this bald-headed guy who was popping in from Arizona, and that's you. Mm-hmm. Um even then showing the portfolio <laughs> and uh like i said there were like 12 artists that worked there you and i started taking lunch breaks together you gave me a respect as a beginning artist that really pushed me forward to want to continue to do that and to be better um <laughs> Working with the 12, 14 artists that were at, at J Dragon, like nonstop, just mm-hmm. once once I got a machine in my hand and was put in the back room, um, it was kind of like all on my own. I didn't really have a formal apprenticeship. I learned a lot from Jay. And then it was you and Mike Belke and Blackjack. And then there was Mike Holder. Mm-hmm. And then I'd say you guys were my core. Like, you, mm-hmm. you I had, like, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm-hmm. You guys were my village. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys were my right village. Yeah. And, and so was, you know, 
some of the other guys that worked there that it was mm -hmm. like this is what not to do so <laughs> you know yeah. and i got Which told that from you guys sometimes so. the knowing not what to do is more important than knowing than what, what to do, do. Absolutely. absolutely right <laughs> see what them dudes right. are doing do not do that yeah. right mm -hmm. right yep. and uh so yeah we just developed the friendship going out to lunch and and you know people like to be made to feel good and you made me feel good and respected and so like that just grew our friendship. Then I wanted to be around people you were around, and mm -hmm. and uh, eventually you decided to move away, and that kind of broke my heart a little yeah. bit. But I was so excited for you because you were coming back to what you really wanted. You yeah. know, get back to Des Moines, open your own studio, mm -hmm. do it your way without all the bullshit, and uh, well. Bullshit still happened. But. <laughs> well, yeah, bullshit. yeah well, just for brand. I had bullshit. my own bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was your. It might not be better. It might not be worse, but it sure as hell is going to be different. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so I bopped around a couple other shops um, in Chicago in a matter of a couple of years from when you left to when um, you started asking me to come work with you. And uh, I was pretty resistant at mm -hmm. first. Yeah, totally. Even to, I'm like, why leave Chicago? You know, right. it's this big metropolitan mm -hmm. area, all these clients, you know. And why leave Chicago for Des Moines, Iowa? Yeah. You know? And so I got convinced to come out for a visit, which I did, and had a great time. I think I came back for one or two more. And uh, eventually had to be like, you have to stop asking me. I hate telling you no, right, right. you know? <laughs> Um, about three months after I had made that statement, I gave you a call. Yeah. And like, hey, I, I realize now it's not where I am, it's who I'm around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, decided to make that yeah. move to yeah. Des Moines through everything into a U-Haul and towed the car on the back and got a flat tire on the way. <laughs> yep. and, and had and a motorcycle in the, fashion. Yeah. <laughs> had a motorcycle in the Probably, in the probably within two the minutes of you getting in the car, you oh, had yeah, was, mustard on your shirt. <laughs> sure. Right after I got on I-94, Lydia and Ryan, for yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's awesome. So then you put yeah. me up um, and put me to work uh, about few months later i got my job or got my own place and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. rocked and rolled with us for about what this is about 11 years or something Over i think 10, it's close to 13 12, 99 13. to uh 2013 wow there you go yeah yeah so almost 14 right uh, almost so 14. you've had lotus for five six six, six yeah. years yeah. 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 Congratulations just celebrated that. six that's in awesome August. thank you yeah, yeah. thank you that's right decaf coffee um yeah that's it's as you've known and learned over the last six years there's nothing easy about it there's not you, you know? know i mean there's a lot of things i expected open in my own place that like you said, it's your it's your own bullshit now, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so that that kind of makes it. There, there's plus pros and cons absolutely. to that too, yeah. you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, absolutely, and you said that as I oh, was, man. you know, departing uh -huh. that it was not going to be everything I thought it necessarily it was, but right. wishing me the best of luck. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's 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 pluses and minuses and you have to be one able to be able to take the satisfaction you get from main not only building it but maintaining something that works uh as payment yes you know if, if you're not getting really anything from that then you, owning your own place is going to be so freaking annoying yeah you know one of the main things that keeps me happy and satisfied and wanting to keep going is because uh, Skin Kitchen is kind of bigger than me and I respect it and I want to give it and I want to keep the name as good as I can and, you know, like give back to it. And mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, I, I don't know exactly where I was going with that. I got all caught up in my own crap. But no, um, I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I think the best way to describe owning your own business is like having a child. Yes. Every it, it makes you proud. It yeah. makes you embarrassed. It can be the best thing in the world. And That's the so worst. true. Worst thing. Absolutely. And there's days where like, why did I, why did I have that kid? <laughs> yeah. Like I could yeah. be doing what, anything. I, I'd have vacation right. time that I'd yeah. get paid for what right now. But yes. no, no. I, 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 yeah. I made this. 
yep. thing. I chose to do that, this. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and that's that's a really crazy thing too. If you work for someone else, you can cut the cord. Yep. Like when you're on vacation or whatever, you have n- literally no responsibility. Right. I am on vacation. Mm-hmm. You get that. Yep. Mm-hmm. If you own the place, you, you do never, not. Ever, yeah. ever, ever, ever get have that. a true vacation. It's never really again. hard to create ever. one. No. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's super can't, hard I mean, to leave. Because unless you just close your business and lock the doors for a week or whatever while, yeah. while you're gone, yeah. You're at work because yeah. mm-hmm. that phone has to be there because if something, yeah. God forbid, happens, it has to be signed or answered or whatever. Right. And, yeah. You know, you just you so like it. I said, you have to trade that stuff off for. But it's mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's mine. Know, yeah. but it's mine. Look what I did. You know, look yeah. what I was able to cobble together with a good help, a lot of help from good people and mm-hmm. a little bit yeah. of sweat and a little bit of curse words. A little words. bit of hard words. You do. Yeah. You, you know, have to keep in have. mind what it brings to you, what gratification Absolutely. you get out of it and it can be hard to lose sight of that when things are getting tough Mm -hmm. um you know i i've gone through when i first left i was trying to just kind of do things on my own i needed some me time yeah and um luckily i was able to still come back here and still do so i can work with other artists and that um but i went through the first employee and then the second Mm -hmm. employee and now i have an apprentice and Mm -hmm. um what I'm getting out of it is like learning about myself. And that's really interesting lately, like yeah. trying to become a leader and um, manage people and whatnot and, and, and encourage them to be their best, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, while trying to stay my best. And uh, it, it's definitely a journey right now. Oh, yeah. 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 It can be difficult, man, because you're taking on a whole a whole another set of roles once you own a business. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I found out when I had the shop out in Deadwood, it was there was a lot more to it than just hey, I can go to work when I want, I can do it how I want, it's <laughs> and, my thing. Like no, that's exactly yeah. the opposite. Exactly. And, if you, and I think that's why maybe a lot of either tattoo shops fail or either small businesses fail, is they look at it as kind of extra freedom, and it's, it's absolutely not. the opposite. Yeah, you lose it's freedom. Absolutely the opposite of that. You you have to go to work. Yeah. You're the only one that has that to go has to work. Go. Yeah. If everyone else calls in sick and you you're still sick, gotta be there. you have to go to yeah. work. Yeah. You know, and no that's one what else, it turned into. No quickly. one else gives a f more that that shop is open or closed than, than you. you. It's mm-hmm. your and child. And if you, you expect someone else to give an f more, it's then not you're, you're that's failing. why it's part of the reason why you're so unhappy. Yeah. You, you know, be, you <laughs> yeah, you're gonna fail. Example. Exactly Which that. Which means that yeah. you can't be the boss guy that just. Does. No one's I gonna do more work than the boss. Nope. Never. That he would he would leave right in the middle of dinner shift. He was a great chef. He loved his business. He loved food, but he would leave mm-hmm. in the middle of dinner service to go do something because he felt like doing it. And mm-hmm. it's like, well, this is why your business is failing. Right. Yeah, and, and, exactly. and and that's why I think a lot of shops fail. Um, you know, some younger kids get some, you know, get get a couple tattoos behind them. And they're like, ah, oh, screw all this. Ah, oh, this is all we have, you know, and come and go. And then you have a shop that's only open two days a week or something. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, well, I'm yeah. going in today. Yeah. And then, so, yeah. yeah, uh, it, yeah so it's a seven it's day the exact week, opposite, I guess, if you want. Year. But it's all about what you expect to get out in of it. In a right. way, mm-hmm. I would agree that it's the exact opposite. But um, I also kind of feel like I did gain some sort of freedoms. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe it's not the 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 freedom from not being tied to the shop and my concerns and, and worries about that. Yeah. For me, it was like, again, going back to it's mine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wasn't... It, I have me to disappoint. I, I didn't yeah. feel as much as maybe I was huh. disappointing somebody else. And that kind of lifted a freedom for me. Like working for someone else, mm-hmm. I kind of felt a little like I'm such a people pleaser. I yeah. didn't want to disappoint. Yeah. And that- um, I think it's important that when you own your own business, you have enough of your personality in it so that it becomes a part of you. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I think that makes a lot of it easier. Plus, if you're able to enable other people to do stuff and see them do their potential, you kind of live through that. So you end up having all these little children, oh, yeah. so to speak, or projects yeah. or what have you. When the shop's doing well and you are and you got your guys that work with you and they're doing well, man, it makes you feel good. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you, you have responsibility to the people that work for you. Not only do you have to keep the shop open and provide for yourself, like you got to make sure there's enough business that these guys that you've hired on, mm-hmm. and, you know, they're That's keeping motivated, thing. they're doing their mm-hmm. thing, they're being able to eat. You can't be, you know, the king of the castle and everybody that works for you starving to death. Yeah, mm-hmm. and not, not, not to be successful.
successful by any means. I mean, no, but yeah, that, that's true. You know, they are kind of your little children, and and what do you do with anybody who has kids? Know you freaking worry about them. Twenty four seven. You know, yeah. and you know, are they in a good mood? Why aren't they in a good mood? Oh, yeah. how big of a problem is this? You know, how much is this going to affect their life? You know, uh, uh, are they able to get food? Oh man, they're going to have another kid. Oh, well, that was yeah. we're coming in the slow season. You know, mm-hmm. and that's that's stuff that. If you just come to work, you don't have to worry about anything like nope. that. You come to work and go, man, Joe's kind of fucked. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's it. And then you go home. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's a bunch of little things. So You might not have to, but still you might. Yeah. You know, like as well, a co-worker. Oh, like, well, right, right. Yeah. Well, you're a girl. See, you know? No, I'm kidding. It, but no, but, but, well, but it's, it's not, not so much not, on your shoulder. Yeah, I mean, it's not hey, man, I'm, I'm with you. I'm sure. side by side. I can't do anything for you. Mm-hmm. But yeah. when, but if you're the boss, you're this rich, I can do anything, I have all the answers kind of guy who lives a better life than you could ever dream of guy. Mm-hmm. You know? You're right. So if I'm suffering, why aren't you fixing it? Thank you for carrying all my burdens all these years. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You you're are welcome. here. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I never afforded you paid vacations like you asked for. <laughs> <laughs> did I really ever? Oh, my God, yeah. I did not ask for a vacation. I yeah. asked for time off and hated every moment paid. of having to ask. Paid, yeah. I asked for paid vacations. Yeah. Paid Maybe because vacation. it took forever to get a raise. Or faster. Too <laughs> hey, uh, More production, more production. I'm pretty good. Well, All right, well. I think we covered a lot there. Yeah, uh, it's a yeah. good place to stop. Yeah. You've been listening to or watching Q&A in the Kitchen. We post these every other Sunday. We do the video version and then the podcast version. So if you want to listen, you can listen. If you want to watch, you can watch. This is brought to you in part by Skin Kitchen Tattoo, the Axiom Body Piercing Studio, Deaf and Deaf Before Decaf, which we've been drinking all day today. We've been drinking fall as... Paul has the F word. She curses on her label. So if you're a good Christian person, don't buy her coffee. <laughs> but everybody she's else, it's okay. She's, she's a very... Uh, she's a super I know a lot of Christians. Are fire, fire. We put the fun in dysfunction. No matter what. Except I'm Southern Baptist. There's only ones that don't cuss anymore. What? I was raised in Baptist. Yeah, I don't know. Is that good or bad? I don't know. We got bad. our butts whipped a lot and yelled at and cursed at a lot. Wasn't <laughs> Baptist the reason that Footloose was a movie? That's what I thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't hold me down, Okay, hey, let's go over. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Uh, Subscribe if you haven't already, so that you don't miss any episodes or any of the other five, four to five videos we post a week. Um, And uh, if you're listening to the podcast, subscribe to that, too, because we will be posting these every other Sunday. Till next time, oh, here's hoping all your tattoos and piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area or the Iowa City, um, Eastern Iowa area, or just nearby, we hope to see you for your tattooing and body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Be nice to each other. See ya.